Hi folks, welcome back. This is Dana with the News News, and this is the first and only channel dedicated entirely to the stuff nobody knows about. The obscures, the long forgotten, or the brand new items and perfumery that are not yet known. So, for today, um, I have an atypical video because I've been challenged by the one and only Sebastian Jara from Looking Feeling Smelling Great to do a four for life, which is absolutely cruel because, you know. Um, so I did it my way and I, I cornered poor Sebastian to ask for permission to uh, skew the concept a little bit. He was very graceful and gracious to say yes. So my four for life will not follow the four seasons. Um, I grew up close to Siberia. I, you know, I live in California. I'm confused, okay, about seasons and all that stuff. So I'm not going to do seasons. I will do instead cardinal points. So what follows are the four fragrances that I find my direction uh, with, so to speak. I don't even know how to express this. My 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 north and my west and my south and my east. Um, so if this makes sense to you, stick around. If you like nerdy facts about perfume and perfumery, uh, make sure to subscribe and follow. You find you can find me on Instagram as well at, at Nose Nose. And most recently, I also started writing for Safleur Bon. Oh, oh, oh. I'm the newest addition to their um, editorial team. So if you prefer written content and slightly more poetic approach to reviews, um, I'm there, you can find me there. So, let's get started. Um, the North, since we started with the North, for me. And this was a very, very tough one and I'll tell you why, from, for very superficial reasons. My North is Tenoir, over here. Tenoir 29 from Lulabo. Lulabo is a house that I like because I find it very easy to wear on my skin. Uh, I don't always want complicated things. I don't always want conceptual stuff, although I'm highly abstract in my thinking. Um, Lulabo delivers um, straightforward, clean, high quality um, perfumery, in my opinion. Um, I've loved them since the beginning. I've worn much of their line, and I think I have four or five bottles in my collection. Um, so Tinoa here is my also also my first bottle that is purchased for me. I'm not gonna show it to you again because this is my endearing uh, name my partner uses for me. You know when they say for so and so and date and all that stuff. That's cute. Uh, Tinoa, Tinoa, Tinoa from Le Labo. There you go. Bam. Tinoa is an exercise in fig. Uh, they say, but to my nose, Tenua uh, corresponds to the north because I see it smelling like a Swedish sauna. I see it smelling like the inside of an igloo at the, the end of a very, very uh, long uh, narwhal hunting day. Uh, there are metallic, uh, sanguinic aspects to it. Um, there are milky aspects to it, um, there are saffrony and black tea-ish and cardamom-y, uh, creamy aspects to it. Um, uh, yes, of course, that can all uh, come together as a fig accord, uh, but I would rather describe it as a liquid tea. It is a liquid tea. This is one of the few uh, Le Labo fragrances that actually smell like what it says on the bottle. Um, it, I do smell um, cedar. I smell broken new twigs. I smell some sort of uh, wet stone that's warm at the same time. So this is the inside of the north. This is what fighting the north smells like. If you're into Game of Thrones, this is what Winterfell, inside Winterfell, and those, those halls <laughs> where, where the fire's burning in the, in the hearth, this is what it smells like. Um, there is no fur aspect to it, which um, 
I kind of appreciate. It's a, it's a good change from what you'd expect a winter smell to smell like. We're so used to see rivers of lava and heavy embers that um, something that actually smells like steam, steamed rice, steam off of um, tea, a teacup, um, you know, a hearth, a hot stone is always a good change. So this is my north. <coughs> Noir 29. I know the light is off and my camera is not the most potent, but there it is. Tenwar 29. I said this was hard because my alternative for my north was this one and I did not pick it because I think it's hideous. <laughs> Whoever designed this odious bottle Please, please go home in a cab because you are drunk. I don't understand this. I absolutely adore the House of Menditorosa and Talisman's collection and all that stuff. I've loved it and talked about it since the beginning of time, since before it was um, accessible in the United States. And this is their Neptuno, the Neptune, which is a very icy leather, powdery leather. I love this fragrance. It would have been my north. Had it come in a regular freaking sorry bottle. And for those of you who go, oh, you should care about the fragrance, not the bottle. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. The moment you will eat blindfolded with your nose like this, I will believe that the rest of the senses do not participate in our fascinated fascination with 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 perfumery. Until then, please allow me to Disconsider stuff for my tops based on aesthetics, which in this case is like Les Fleurs du Mal. This is an example of Baudelaire, the aesthetic of the ugly. No, 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 no. Sometimes the ugly ain't got no aesthetic, okay? No. Great fragrance, Netuno, but it didn't make my top because of this ugly bottle. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that was North. North was... Tenoir from Le Labo. <sighs> Moving on. And since I believe I go against the grain, let's go counterclockwise and speak about my West. My West in my head is associated with the Western modern school of perfumery. Um, and for that, I actually picked... A cheapie that, in my opinion, is one of the best fragrances ever made. Um, also, in my opinion, although it's called Femme, Women, um, is also entirely, entirely unisex. Uh, something that reminds me of the hand um, in Bogue Profumo, for example. And something that I love so much that I actually explored pretty much all the copies that were created for it um, and around it. And that is Yope by the German house of Yope. Um, this was created by Michel Almerac in 1987. So do expect a big, very bold fragrance. Like I said, it reminds me of bold perf uh, perfumery and styling. This is an exercise in white flowers, of course, and anything you can possibly imagine you can drop in there. I think the most prominent white flower in this composition is um, Neroli, uh, but there's a lot of um, uh, tuberose, there's a lot of um, honeysuckle, even though this kind of falls in the yellow uh, flower category in my head. Um, there's a lot of jasmine, there's a lot of everything that's white. Also, there are a lot of um, aldehydes. There's a good sandalwood in here, or a good application of sandalwood if you want. There's um, civet, a little bit dirty, yeah. Some tonka, actually quite a lot. Uh, coriander. Um, there are a lot of citrus, and there's um, some lily of the valley, just a tiny bit. I also smell a little bit of lilac um, of the wild kind, 
but that's very um, deep, bur deeply buried in there. Uh, Almerac, as you know, is a classic. He created stuff that we all know and enjoy, um, like um, Kashmir, Kashmir, uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing all these accents. I'm sorry. Fahrenheit from Dior, um, Venezia from Laura uh, Viaggiotti, um, classics, stuff that um, became cult uh, perfumery. Um, uh, more recently, I think he does stuff for Zadig and Voltaire, uh, but he created a lot of the big, bold perfumes that um, had hordes of followers. This is the type of perfumery that uh, can easily make signature for pretty much anyone. So Yope Fun looks like this. It's a weird bottle. Yope is a is a is a relatively inexpensive house from Germany. They make clothes, but they created, as you probably uh, many of you know, um, created a lot of interesting, well done fragrances and the attention to detail is staggering to me because everything is good quality um you know like let's see the sprayer has detailing you know the 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 uh the lid is well composed the bottle is strong the uh mechanism the spraying is is flawless I don't know if this is German technology or German attention to detail, and I, to be honest, I don't care who decided this is going to be a good, a well-executed fragrance, because the result is that it is a well-executed fra fragrance. It's um, diva-ish, uh, but it can be very easily worn on um, male skin because it is strong enough and deep enough and animalic enough to be rounded just like i said it reminds me of um some items from from vogue it's very strong and the performance is amazing everybody's looking for beast mode this and bro that well bro if you're looking for beast mode and a panty dropper you're looking for the wrong things nobody's going to drop their panties if you're not a nice guy but <laughs> if you're looking for something that is Good that none of the other bros are wearing. Give this a chance. This is fantastic um, perfumery, well blended, impeccable execution in my book. And like I said, I was looking for everything that um, is at this in the same register as this. Um, and there are two very very close smells to this. Now this is about I don't know thirty bucks. You can find it on eBay for like 20 I don't know. Very, the fragrance net, whatever. Very, very, very low price point for this. It hasn't been reformulated. I don't think it will be reformulated. Whoever created this is a genius in my book. Almirac, I'm looking at you. Sir, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Um, there are two others that I found, and I'm going to show them to you, not because they make the top uh, four, uh, for life, but because it's interesting information. Uh, one is Desirade uh, from Aubusson, and it's this like brick of a fragrance, not as good, but in the same uh, close neighborhood. Oh my god, this is ridiculously big. And the other one is rare, you won't be able to find it very easily, but if you use this in the past, and you're looking for a replacement, this would be it and probably more satisfying than this because it's m more compact and more intense. This is called Daniel de Fasson. It goes for like hundreds of dollars a bottle now because it's been discontinued. Um, and whoever <laughs> is doing um, likes cheapies a lot, you will recognize the bottle because I think Paris Hilton has one fragrance for which they bought the leftover bottles from this guy and made it siren or something and reused it to re to, to bottle um, her fragrance. But Danielle Dufasson, if this is a signature fragrance and you haven't seen it in a long time, give this a chance, give it a nose. Can't say enough about it. Yope. Fum! Completely unisex. All right. So this is my West because it does represent the best... Um, and the clearest and the most original parts of modern Western uh, perfumery. Moving on 
And if you are watching Game of Thrones, this would be my Dornish liquor. Okay, this is my South, okay? I don't know if you're ready for this. Uh, some of you may know this fragrance is not completely unknown. Uh, this is accessible as well. I think I saw a bottle of 75 for like 30 something dollars on Germany Bay, maybe? But I think when I purchased it, um, I got it directly from them and I paid about 70 something dollars, maybe 80 something with shipping to the States. And that is my South, if you know what I mean. Teofenol! Oh, I love this bottle. I don't understand this rim here. It feels like a belt that's too tight for a body that's supposed to be round. <laughs> But I love this, you know, this this feeling of a of a baseball or whatever. It's uh, it's a fragrance. Um, this smells like thighs. Okay, um, it's a they call it an oriental sheep. I don't even know what to say. Um, it's very heavy on cumin. It smells like body odor. It does smell like the the body after sex. It smells like juices, mixed juices. It has a little bit of unripe banana smell, if you know what I mean. It does have a, a, a sub note of sweat, of skin that's been lived in, slightly humid. Um, slightly juicy, slightly uh, dripping, fresh sex, if if that makes any sense. I am not one to call a fragrance this or that. I believe that I wear the fragrance and the fragrance doesn't wear me. Uh, people will know me as Dana, not as the lady who wears so-and-so ever. And if that's the case, probably I failed as a person, to be honest. Because I wear clothes, I wear makeup, I wear fragrance, not the other way around. The clothes don't wear me. The cover doesn't make the book, correct? So, so guess, I guess I'm talking about myself, the way I feel when I wear this, or the moments I want, crave to wear this, are the moments when I feel sexy, when I want to project exactly what's on the inside. I don't know. Um, but let's talk about the ingredients a little bit. Um, there's a lot of uh, cumin, like I said, but a lot of saffron and cardamom. I, this is, I guess, a combination that I keep seeking in my endeavors, and I like the different kinds of applications um, of it. Um, there's a lot of uh, patchouli. There are a lot of tonka. There's, uh, there's a lot of tonka. Um, there's um, uh, frankincense, there's sandalwood, <sighs> orange blossom again, again, some violets because it does have powdery aspects. <sighs> it's not necessarily sweet, but I uh, detect a lot of spicy flowers as well. When I say spicy flowers, I mean rose, geranium. Sometimes hyacinth uh, um, carnation, they can read spicy to my nose. In any case, this is a very round, golden body fragrance. Performance is great for this as well. It's very sex sexy, it's very voluptuous, it's very unctuous, it's very um, alive fragrance. And that's why I picked it for my South. This is South, South down there. And this is Dorn, the land of free drinking and free love and sun and people and, you know, fornications. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm drooling. Which means there's probably a little bit of jasmine in this as well because he owns. Uh, as you know, can have an impact on our <clears throat> bodily functions. They're aphrodisiacs. So I guess this works for myself. Theo, Theo, I can't say it properly in English. Fennel, uh, an English house with a very, very affordable and accessible line of extremely personal body, human body, sexy, 
deuces. So that was my south. And now my last, um, I am very proud, although pride is not a good way to describe this. I am very relieved and extremely happy to be able to present something that comes from home. It's rare that um, you find objectively find something good enough to uh, present, at least for me, uh, because Romanian perfumery is uh, at its mere beginnings. But there has been somebody there who's been working with, with uh, Maestro, um, and that is um, Arturetto Landi. Arturetto Landi um, uh, partnered with a house uh, called Creator de Motion, Creator of Emotions, to uh, build a collection based on local folklore, folk, folk, ta fairy tale, I guess, characters, folk um, characters. Uh, the trilogy includes something like Prince Charming, I guess, in translation, and that is an exercise in a very harsh, very narcissistic leather. Uh, the second one is our version of a princess, the local, you know, uh, beauty, um, and that is a poisonous green cannabis, intense fragrance, very uh, unlike what you'd expect. And the third one is our local version of an ogre. And to me, uh, this is my east. This is the balmy countryside rural uh ancient wisdom if you want um again very unexpected and this is parfum parfum des mil perfume of an ogre or perf ogre perfume the, the bottle looks like this bas means fairy tale so this is a fairy tale collection uh like I said, this was created by Arturetto Landi, and it's a very, very, very complex um, fragrance. Uh, for those of you who um, are not familiar with the perfumer, he um, um, worked with Profumi del, del Forte, with Beale, um, Pantone Roma, Profumi del Marmo, and the Rundholz. His creations are very complicated for a very simple effect. Uh, this includes tens of, of natural ingredients. This is natural uh, perfumery at its best. Look at the color. Ugh, I love it. Just like this one. I have something for orange or intense color fragrances. That's why Slumber House was like an instant um, love <laughs> for me. I just dropped this on my computer. Ah. Excuse me. Uh, like I said, this this includes a lot of ingredients, and based on the time of day, temperature, even mood, it changes. I guess like an ogre would. Anybody watch Shrek? Uh, but the overall feeling for me, like I said, inspired a, a vision of you know Russian steppes, um, the taiga. Mm thousands of miles of Siberian forest, okay? Um, beginning of blizzards without it being cold. Um, maybe the end of a summer day um, on enormous, no end fields covered in bitter grasses, if you want. This, at times, smells like hay, okay, and galbanum, and, and um, earth, patchouli, vetiver. Sometimes it smells like the attic of a, of a house in the country where they have medicinal plants hanging down to dry. Um, sage, clear sage, galbanum, thyme. Uh, myrtle, chamomile, wild chamomile, actually, a lot of that. <sighs> Sometimes it smells like a forest, like I said, fir and cedar 
And a lot of birch. Tarry birch. <sighs> Sometimes it smells like a very tiny village orthodox church. Frankincense. And myrrh. And elemi. And, um... <sighs> carnations. And potted flowers outside where the little cemetery starts. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if there's some animalics in here. I smell fur. Um, I, th I think it's costus, but I don't know anybody who uses costus anymore, so I'm not certain what the formula includes. But this is my east. This is where the sun rises. This is where I wake up to pray. If I would pray, I would pray in this direction. This is balmy. It's like... It's like the universal medicine for the soul. Uh, it's not easy to wear. It's very aromatic. It's very dense. Um, it's, it's very intense. And it's very soul... <sighs> like this it's not meditative it makes you want to jump in your boots with that knife in your teeth this is this is like the the herbaceous concoctions that grandmothers use to do suction cups on you when you're a kid it's not this is the bitter medicine you drink before you go to war and I know all this is very plastic, and I know all of this is a little bit confusing. My descriptions are not usually usually this this graphic, but you know, four for life and cardinal points is not necessarily a, a, a very practical um, and down to earth approach to perfumery. This is highly conceptual um, in 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 approach. This is this is uh, this is an abstract way of thinking of my collection. Uh, direction, d directionality, and access, and and uh, uh, um, finding my way, uh, and my four ways of being, um, is uh, is an exercise in um, looking at this whole art as not necessarily something that um, uh, defines but complements oneself with um with illusions of universality if you want i'm getting a little bit <laughs> a little bit too abstract but uh these are the four for life that i picked for myself um these are the four for life uh my north is de noir 29 my West is Yop Fum, a very inexpensive, um, heavily underrated fragrance. My South makes me jiggle is Theo Fennel. Uh, and my East is the Ogre fragrance, Parfum des Meaux from Créateur d'Emotion. Um, I will leave all of the links below. Uh, or the most representative links directly to the houses below. I don't have any affiliations with any of them. They're just um, creations I admire. So I've been allowed to tag other people um, um, and and um, I don't want to inopportune anybody. I hope they will respond to my call. Um, I did ask them uh, if if uh, they would be okay with it, but I didn't give them too many details, so I hope they do have time for it. I think it's an interesting exercise, and I think it's an opportunity for us to actually get to know each other better. Um, one is the Sentinel Pep, sir, um, and this is because I like the way you work, uh, because I trust your taste, and because you were the very first reviewer to acknowledge my presence on the internets <laughs> uh, so um, you will always uh, be on my short list of, of, uh, of people to follow and to appreciate the second is Diana from Tomalis 
Um, our tastes are not necessarily very similar, but I think she, at this point, is one of the hardest working people um, in the reviewers um, community, and um, I want to acknowledge her efforts um, um, and to assure her of my support. If ever I have something um, I could assist with, I would do it. So um, these are my two choices. These are my two call outs. Uh, I'm curious to see what they come up with. Or for life, this was my cardinal point. Thanks. Um, as responded, or as in response, my English is getting a little bit numb right now. In response to Sebastian, the one and the only. <laughs> okay, folks, if you like this kind of reviews or any kind of reviews coming out of this mouth with this kind of brain and these kinds of associations, please stick around, make sure to follow, make sure to share, um, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you next time.